Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Word. In this module, I want to look at some of the basic formatting features that you get in Word. So when you first open Word, you're probably going to come across this screen. If I just go back to it, File, New, this one, or you may come to Home, this one, and it will look slightly different to mine, depending on what you've been doing. I'm going for a blank document, and this is what you get. You get the ribbon across the top and then you've got different tabs on that ribbon to help you do different things. For this session, though, I'm going to stay on the home tab and focus on this font area and what that's all about. And I'm going to type some text on the screen and I'm just going to type random characters with a few spaces like so. So I don't have to actually type any words. Now, if I want to format this line of text, all I have to do is highlight it. Now to highlight it, I just need to come into this area, this sort of white space on the left. So that's the actual margin marker there. That's an indent marker, but you see the difference between the two colors. That's where the margin is. If you put your mouse there and click, you will highlight that row. And you get this mini toolbar that appears, which gives you some functionality. And if you look, if you look at this, you can see it's very similar, almost identical to what you've got at the top there. So when you first highlight something, that will appear. If you click away, though, and do something else, it disappears. So I just clicked it again, and it's disappeared, and it's not coming back. So first time you get there, and you can see that. So if I want to make this bold and bolden the text, I can click the B there, or I can click the B at the top. It doesn't matter whichever you want to do. Now, the whole line has gone bold. Now, if I get to the end of this line and carry on typing, it's still bold. Now, there is a keyboard command that you can use to put that back to normal text. And that is the control key and the space bar. And I've done that just. And now, if you start typing again, you can see that that's no longer bold. Now, if I press enter and just type some more text with some spaces, the red underline is just it doesn't recognize that as a word, so it's telling you it's a spelling mistake. If I highlight this line and use this little feature this time, I'm clicking on the U underline, you get that underline. I'm clicking on the I, italic, and I'm clicking on the B as well, bold. So I've done all three. Get to the end, carry on typing, and you can see that's on. Now, if I do control space bar and carry on typing, that's now off. You can see the underlines off, the bolds off, and the italic is off. So control space bar puts everything back to what you started with. Now press and enter again, type in some more text with some spaces, highlighting the whole line. This time I want to have a look at changing the actual font size. So you've got the size up the top there. Now this word to Homer, it may be different on your computer, it depends whether you've changed it or not, I have changed the default. The default that Microsoft uses is Calibra 11 point. I don't like that, so I've personally changed it to this one. It's totally up to you. But it's on 12 point, and if I drop that down, you can see you can change the font size, and it gives you like a little preview as you're coming down, and it looks like the limit is 72, but it certainly is not. If I type 72 there, that looks like it's the maximum, but I can click into this box, and I could type, for example, 200 and press enter. And now that's got bigger. This goes up to 1660 or something like that. I'm not exactly certain what it is. It's not 1660. Probably tells you what it is there. 1638 is the maximum you can get. So I'll go for 1600. You basically, you're going to get a really big letter you can see where it's done there look obviously i don't want to do that undo again back to square one Just zoom that back up i'll keep undoing so i'm doing control and z which is undo you've also got undo on this little mini toolbar at the top there which is called the quick access toolbar you can add things to that which i'll do at a later session so that's that one now the keyboard command to increase the font so this one basically you do it two at a time 
which is okay but sometimes that might be too many you can do this control key down right square bracket one two three each time i press the right square bracket with the control key down it is increasing the font by one point you can see it changing on the ribbon at the top there if i do the control key in the left font square bracket you can see how that's decreasing it if i want to change the font style itself I can drop this down and pick a style like Algerian, which is quite a strange one, like that. And if I click at the end and type, you can see that that is picking that change. If I do control space bar though, and carry on typing, it's back to the default as it's called. And I'll press enter again, and I will type some more text. So what I want to do on this line, I'm just gonna highlight this line, I want this the color of the font to change. So I've got the A up there, and it's on red at the moment. I've got all these other colors. I'll click red, like that. And then I'm going to do control space bar, type. And then I'm gonna change this color. So I've been highlighting the whole line, but what happens if you want just to highlight a little bit? You can do this, you can click in front of a letter and drag over it to highlight it. So that's done all of that as well, that little, I'll make a space there. So I'll just drag in front of that one, highlight all of that. And it's showing red. I don't want red though. If you did want red, you could just click that. I want blue. So I've gone blue. And then type a few more characters. And then do control space bar. And it will come back to normal. Like that. Press and enter again. Now, I want to have a quick look at this, this X with a two down, subscript, and a two up, superscript. So this is to do with when you do dates. So if I go the 23rd, for example, when I press the space bar, Word automatically puts that up, subscript, because it recognizes that as a date. But if I type a chemical formula, H2SO4, now the two and the four should be sub, down what you have to do is highlight them i'm highlighting the two i'm going to use my control key i'm holding that down and i'm highlighting the four and that takes a bit of practice when you first get into this so you might want to do it one at a time but i need to click on the x with the two down and i get myself after the four i'll come back a bit now if i carry on typing i've got little baby letters look because it's still remembering that format so i need to make sure i do after the four I need to do control space bar to put it back up to normal. So that's superscript and subscript. Now, if you want to do like a symbol, for example, 23 degrees, there is a feature in Word where you can insert symbol. So if I go to this tab at the top where it says insert, over on the right, you've got symbol, symbols, and in there you will have common symbols but also lots more in there so what i'm looking for is the degree symbol now so i've got myself into symbol and there's the degree symbol i'm clicking on that and you can see there it's got a character code of 176 which you can use but that is a degree, I click on insert, and then that will put it in like so. And there's lots of different symbols in there, in there, as you can see, all these different font types as well, loads of loads of information. So I'll close that now. So there's my 23, and I'll press enter again to come down and get a different line of text. Because what I want to use now is what's called strike through. So I'll type some text, go back to home, Strike through is this ABC with a line through it. If I highlight that and click on strike through, it just puts a line through the text. And if I click off that, you can see it clearly, a line through the text. So you're basically saying that I don't want that text anymore, um, but I don't want to delete it. I want you to be able to see as a colleague that I have actually decided to delete that bit. It, there are loads of track, what are called tracking tools in Word, and that's like a first one if you like. Um, another one that you might want to use, if I just do control space bar and knock that off and then press enter, so I've got some more text. 
you could also highlight the line and use this little marker pen which is yellow or whatever color you want and this is also an identifiable chunk of text that you want to say i'm not happy with that or whatever and then you knock that off and make sure you do a control space bar and type again so it's make sure it's off now you've got other features here we've done all of these now you've got this a if you drop that down these are just fancy formats fancy letters if you like you can click on one of these there's an a with a shadow if i just put caps lock on a b c you can see how that works and then if i do control space bar again i'm back to normal caps lock is on i'll take that off but i'm back to normal press enter type some more text highlight it this time highlighting it going up to that a looking at some of the other options you're getting a preview of this now when you hover over that you've got different options from here you can change the color of whatever you're selecting you can change the color you've got shadow options loads of different options on these shadows down the bottom there you can see what that's going to do you've got reflection options you've got glow options so you can see how this works as you move your mouse across you can see the preview there you go and then control space bar and carry on typing press enter now if i type some more and highlight the line up here you've got increasing the font by two remember control square bracket will do it by one and that's coming down by two this one is all about changing case i'll do a video on that later on and this one is about clear formatting so i've just cleared formatting so that's like control space bar putting it back to default now let me just do another line of text and I'll highlight that. So I've covered all of this, but you've got other features in this little arrow. If I click on that, it's going to open up a dialog box, what's called a dialog box, with some additional features. So there's no need to come in here to change the font, style, or bold italic, or size, because you've got them there. What you have got in here, though, is font color and underlying style. So underline at the moment is just one line, but you've got options in there to do like a double underline. And you've also got an underlying color like red. You get a little preview down there, double underline. I'll just click OK to that. So you can see that double underline. And as I type, that's going to carry on. I'll do control space bar to knock that off and press enter again and type some more text and then highlight that line and go back into that font area format font so all of those are features so those two are sort of slightly new and then we've got strike through which we did with the abc but then double strike through which just basically puts two lines through it subscript and superscript you don't need to come in here because you've got those there i'm taking that tick off small caps if i click on that puts everything in little small capitals and then you've got all caps, puts everything in capitals, step that off. And then you've got this, hidden. When you click on hidden, so that line's highlighted, I'll click OK, it disappears. It hides it. It does what it says on the tin, hides the text. The only way you can see hidden text in a document is by clicking on show hide at the top there, and it will show you the hidden text. Take that off, and it disappears. So for you to remove the hidden, you need to click that on, highlight the, the row, go back into the little arrow and the font group and take that tick off hidden and then click OK. Now you might be sitting there thinking, why would I hide text? So sometimes people hide text because hidden text does not print off. So you can put on screen instructions for people hidden so it won't print off if they do print it. That's why you might use hidden text. Now just type um, another line of text and then highlight that. Go back into the font area because you've got a few other features down the bottom here. If you change the for, uh, font style and font size, etc., 
like I have to Tahoma, and then you want to, to set that as a default. So every document has that. You would set it here at the top, and then you would click on that, and then that would be every new document would have that font. Next to it, you've got text effects. If I click on that, you've got text fill. So you can actually fill the, the text itself with a color. You can make it transparent. And you've got text outline and you can do the same. Solid outline, change that color and basically totally mess this up. And if I click OK to that, And then OK again, let's see what's happened there. You see what has happened there? So it's a bit like getting that A there, all the options there, but you're just sort of doing it yourself. Now, the other feature that you've got there is advanced. So some features here, you've got scaling, spacing and position, and then a buy option. So I just want to look at these three at the top first off. So scaling, if I just click OK to that for a second, and highlight this, in fact, I'll do a new line, control space bar, new line, highlight this, and then go into that font area. And on the advanced tab, you've got scaling on 100%. So this is what you can play around with if you're trying to get what you're printing off onto a, say, pre-printed form. So spacing, it's expanding this, it's spreading it out. If I just open that up a little bit, you can see what it's doing to the text. I'll type it in by, let's put five. So I've put five in there, it's spaced it right out. For whatever reason you want to do that, you can do that. If I come back into it, um, position normal, you can raise this or lower this. So raise, so it's just coming up on the line by three points. And you can move that up and down as well. I'll click OK to that. And it just jumps up a little bit. I'll get to the end of there, do Control Space Bar and press Enter. And then you just carry on typing if you cleared the font. Now, if I come down the margin and highlight all of this that I've messed about with to show you and do Control Space Bar, it will put everything back to the default. Control Space Bar. The only thing it didn't do was this, this line, because I've highlighted this line, so I would need to take the highlighting off by going there, no color, and then that's off. Everything's back to normal. And I'm gonna highlight it again and press the delete key to get rid of all of that because I'm done with that for now. One last thing I want to quickly go through, I'm going to type equals rand, open and close bracket, and press enter on that that will give me some random text sometimes you've got text in the middle that you want to highlight like this like I showed you earlier I want that to be bold so I just highlight it by dragging over it a single word if I double click on it I can make that wherever I select that's why this little mini toolbar comes up and it's quite useful I want that to be underlined I want that to be red and so on and so on you can change it straight away from here you don't actually have to go up to the top there. And obviously I'm not needing to do control space bar because I'm isolating the part that I want to format like that. So that's all I want to talk about in this video, how you can use the basic formatting tools to get your document looking pretty cool. So thank you for your time and I'll catch you on the next one.